nothing but you, God. Hallelujah. Where would we be without you, God? Where would we be, Father, without you? Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just sing that one more time. I believe God wants to do something in this place tonight. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you lose my shackles and you set me.
Christ. Here tonight. Because that's the song saying, just let God touch your heart and you'll never be the same. Because I know, for me, I know. Years ago, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be somewhere else. And everybody know where somewhere else is. But tonight, on this night, the 31st day of December, of the last day of the year, of 365 days in this year of 2014. I'm standing in front of you, my brothers and sisters, in Christ. But we're going to go forth with a word. And that word is going to come out of Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Just have you <coughs> do me a favor. Can we please stand as we read the word of the Lord? And when you have it, please say amen.
We're going to go where he tells us to go. We're going to stand in faith. We're going to stand here, God. We're going to live in faith. We're going to minister to the people no matter what comes against us. And they had so many oppositions, not just the persecution. They had even multiple warnings to leave, leave the area and so forth. They stayed. They stayed because they said, these are our people of God. These are God's heart. And so I just want to just praise God for that and just for the new year that's upon us and that you would pray for the people up there. You would pray for the nation of Japan. Um, that you, any any point in time that you have time in inter interceding for Dean and Linda, a missionary team up there, they are faithful men and women of God. They are powerful men and women of God that are ministering to people all up in that region. And I just I just want to say that no matter what you are going through right now, no matter what anything you're going through, go through the fire. Stand in righteousness. Stand. There is not a better time than this right now. People need to see God, and it's going to come through every person in this room. It's going to come through you. He put your, his power, his spirit, his wisdom, his knowledge inside of you. He told you who you are. He told us who we were created to be and to arise in this hour for our brothers and sisters that are around us in these communities, in these cities, in this nation. And if we do not take that responsibility and really hold on to it, and take the mandate and the mantle that he's given us. If you're an intercessor, a prayer warrior, pray. That is the most, that is the most, I've learned that that is the most greatest call to intercede for other people. It is the most beautiful thing. You do not have to be a, a pastor. <laughs> Amen. 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 Pray. Pray. People will always talk about prayer. And I just want to say, if you... I feel a call and pull. I feel like this in my spirit right now, so I'm just going to go there. If you feel a call from God right now, and you've been running from God, and it's been about prayer, and you know God is calling you to pray and be a prayer word, intercede for your community, intercede for as an advocate in some way, shape, or form, do it. Stand in the gap. Stand in the gap for justice. Stand in the gap for righteousness. Stand in the gap for someone who needs, needs to be poured into, who needs to be revived. This is revival tonight. Everything is made new in our lives. And the Bible is true. And we're not going to move from it. We're going to stand in truth and in spirit. And we're going to worship the true and living God for who he is. Amen, saints. That is a blessing. Because we walk by faith and not by faith. And that's a true testimony. The next brother, Brother Franklin Smith. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Come on. Germany doing the same thing that my mom used to do. She was 
sitting in the dark drinking and just weeping. And I felt myself doing the same thing, listening to the exact same music. But you know, God's faithful. God gave me a vision of my life as it is today. Glory to God. Free from alcohol. Happily married. Serving Him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But see, the, the Bible tells us how God shows us an end of a thing. He doesn't show us the process. See, I didn't know what it was going to take to get from point A to point B. And I, I even chuckled at, 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 at that vision. I was like, well, God, how are you going to get me from point A to point B? Just, don't you worry about it. You just believe. Yes, yes. You just believe. So I went through the, the, the rehab because I was in the military at the time. It was just certain things I had to do. And not knocking it, AA wasn't for me. Amen. You, know, you, 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 you can go into these meetings and you have people professing to still be alcoholics 20, 30, 40 years since the last drink. And I said, that won't be my testimony. Come on, and you know how you can hear word, but you don't receive it. I heard John 8.36, he who the Son is made free is free, but I had to receive it. It's, it's just like slavery. You know, when, 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 when they freed the slaves, Many of them didn't realize they were free, so what did they do? They went back to master. Yes. So every time I tried to free myself of the, the alcohol, I went back to master. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So it wasn't until I surrendered all to God that He freed me, He saved me, He yes. set me free. Yes. He, he brought me from, from misery to minister. Right. So if He did it for me, glory to God, Amen. He can do it for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some of us, it may not be alcohol. It may be something else. Yeah, yeah. And not saying to put your stuff out there, but God knows and you know. And only you should know, and, and God will fix that problem that, that you're struggling with. Because we all struggle with things. But God will lead us out of those struggles. Moving forward, with uh, the program tonight, uh, we have a, a special praise dance tonight for you from uh, Sister Joy Tanya and Sister Brown. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to touch the marks and, 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 and fill up your tanks. All right. Because, you know, some of us may came in here with our tanks on. Because it's midweek, it's Wednesday. You know, went to church on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, went to work, and you get mentally drained. Now it's Wednesday, the midweek. So we get that, that 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 refill, filling our tanks up. Yeah. I look at it like that, filling up the tanks. So as uh, this Sister Joy Taylor and Sister Brown come out.
at Sugi Praise and Worship Team has another selection for us.
on this wonderful night that God has prepared for us. Hallelujah. Because God's been good. And uh, he's been awesome. But we're going to go to work before that. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this word that's going to come forth, God. And I ask you, God, to move me, God, and allow you, God, to come in and deliver this word as you will have your people to hear. That it will deliver, God. That it will heal, God, and save somebody's life. God, as you know, we always need disciples. So, Father, we ask you tonight, God, let your spirit reign in this place. Let your anointing, God, cover, God. Cover us with your blood, God, and continue to bless us with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to go straight to the word. We're going to be talking about holy living. And for me, I like to go and look up the words in Hebrew. So, um, to break it down for you a little bit, Hebrew it, it, for holy is pronounced uh, kodash, meaning to set apart, sacrifice for the work of God. Amen. Yeah. And we talk about being holy, and of course, you know that we are supposed to set ourselves aside in order to be used by God, and we can do that only by being holy. Amen. We're going to talk about living. It is pronounced che or k, right? And in the um, in the masculine views, it's an adjective meaning alive or living. So we're going to talk in uh, 2015, our theme is Holy Living is a theme for 2015, amen? amen? Grab your Bibles and turn to Leviticus. I'm going to be going over the Old Testament, so we'll be coming out of Leviticus chapter 20, verses 7 and 8. When you have it, please say amen. Amen. Yes, God, you That's Leviticus chapter 20, verses 7 and 8. Again, you might go too long. Amen. Amen. But the program was moving forward. And it reads, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Verse 8. And ye shall keep my statutes, and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. Amen. Now when you go read a little further, uh, it's talking about, in this chapter, it's talking about the law against children and sacrificing children. Because back then, they would sacrifice children. But God said, okay, you're no longer required to sacrifice children because I am the one who can declare you holy. I am the one who can sanctify you. Amen. And we're talking about living holy in the year 2015. And, and what Moses is telling us is we are to live holy according to what God has set forth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sacrifice yourself, therefore. Be holy. Set yourself apart. That's what you want us to do. Those friends you used to hang out with in 2014, set yourself apart. Amen. Because we want God to bless us this year. Yes. We really want God to be a blessing, not only to us, but the people we come in contact with. So your friends in 2014 to hang out with, bring them to church in 2015. Amen. Amen. Bring them to church. Because the only person that can change them is God. So let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go through a few chapters again. I won't be before you too long. Deuteronomy chapter 14. If you don't have time to turn to it, please write it down. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. And we're speaking about holy living. How God has declared us to be holy. Amen. And it reads, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Yes. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. Yes. Above all nations that are upon the earth. Above all nations that are upon the earth. Above all nations that are upon the earth. What that tells me is that no matter where we go, you're going to find peculiar people. Whether it be in Japan, whether it be in China, whether it be in Australia, you're going to find some saints, some peculiar people there. That's what the Bible tells me. Is that not right? Amen. Holy living in 2015. Deuteronomy, another chapter here, uh, chapter 27, verse 19. And I'll move a little fast in order to program us move forward. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Holy people. Again, in the Hebrew, it means set apart, sanctified. God has called us to be holy. Amen. I'm sorry. Yeah. Verse 27, chapter 27, verse 19. And to make the high above all nations which he hath made in praise and in name and in honor, and that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God 
as he has spoken. Amen? God wants us to be holy. He wants us to live holy. He wants us to consecrate ourselves. He wants us to fast and pray. He wants to have an option or the opportunity to sanctify us so that we can be holy. You have to understand, the reason God wants us to do that is because we represent him. I had, I had a time to explain to my children before about forgiveness and how God wants us to be able to forgive and he wants us to ask people to forgive us if we offend them. The reason being is because we represent God himself. And you, and you look at the Bible and talk about disciples. That's what we are. We're God's disciples. We are here to share the word and represent God, right? In order, to be a, in order for us to be able to represent God, we have to be holy. And I'll prove it to you. We're going to go to Genesis. From the beginning. And I'll close with this. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. I'll give you time to find it. Genesis chapter 2. Again, in the beginning, we are supposed to be holy. And it reads, And the Lord God formed man of dust of the ground. What did he do next? Breathe into him, his nostrils, the breath of life. Where do you think that breath came from? The Holy One, right? So is that not right? Are we not supposed to live holy? Amen? That proves my point. And man became a living soul. May God bless you. Amen?
holy living. Now, you've heard that word about those dry bones. I'm going to tell you, those dry bones must become wet with the word of God. Study it. Meditate. And live his word. We must learn to change what you see and say and have given in your living. I want to give you a few acronyms that might help with the whole living in 2015. Now, those of you who are in the Navy, we use a lot of acronyms. I'm going to give you two of them. The first one is the word debt. D stands for doing. Doing what? E. Everything. Everything but B. T is tired. Doing everything but tired. That's your debt. When you're not tired and giving to God, you're worried about what's been happening to the funds. Don't worry about it. Just do what thus says the Lord. And everything will be alright. Got one more for you. Bible. The pastor gave us his version. I'm going to give you mine. The B is the best. I, instruction. The other B is before. Leaving the L, earth. The best instruction before leaving earth is the Bible. Read it. Get acquainted with it. Use it. And keep the words on the tablets of your heart. You have the holy hookup that will help you do anything that may come your way. He cares about us and our situation. Let's get into the movement of God and keep pressing forward. Because again, 2014 is gone. We're going into 2015. We're going to do some holy living in 2015. God invites us daily to cast our cares and concerns on him simply because he loves us. And there's three things I want you to realize are ways to give your cares to him. The first one is replace negative and self-defeating thoughts with the word of God. Yeah. 2 Timothy states that, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 states, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Sickness or pain in your body, declare that by his stripes, I can and I am healed. Amen. Through prayer and meditation, we can recognize this truth and stay focused on the Father and watch those issues, thoughts disappear. Number two, thank God for giving you peace and joy. Thank him for working in your life. And you'll see that by living holy, there's nothing greater than the love God gives and shows to you on a consistent basis. He never changes, and his word is never voided. He is too wise to make a mistake. Number three, hold on for it's God's amazing grace that will take away your pain. He can change your life and set you free. We had a brother to tell you he was set free. Not by his own will, but God's will. All your joy will keep you closer to God. His amazing grace will cause you to celebrate new life and give you love and peace that will sustain you from the difficulties and problems of life. Through all this, you must realize that you have to be a leader as well. And where am I going with this? Well, I realize that a leader speaks, the leader has ways of allowing his actions to speak louder than the words. I have learned that a leader is someone who says what they mean, mean what they say, and stand firm on the decision, even if the outcome is not what they expected or anticipated. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being a follower, because to me, being a follower makes you better at being a leader. You learn to work out the kinks and issues by watching others and figuring out what works best for your style. Romans 5 and 1 states, Therefore, being justified by 
faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I went a little further and I, I, when I was learning that verse, I changed that we to I. Mm -hmm. Therefore being justified by faith, I have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are covered by the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Triangle, the connection to the Creator, to worship and praise Him only. You have just what God meant for you to have. He is the way, the truth, and the light that will direct your path with righteousness and grace. So, we'll leave you with some things. Let go of complaining. Doesn't help the situation. Let go of always having to be right, because you all can be wrong sometimes. Let go of self-defeating ideas, won't get you anywhere. Let go of your fears, because it didn't give you the spirit of fear. Let go of attachments, because they can't do nothing for you anyway. Let go of making criticism, what's well, used to criticize the people, and nobody's perfect with God. Let go of blame, take some ownership for your own wrong. Let go of your excuses. <clears throat> there ain't worth it anyway. Let go of trying to always control. Let somebody else lead and you just follow. Mm -hmm. Let go of the past. To have a brighter future, you must let go of resisting change, which can be beneficial. Let go of living life to others' expectations. Because when you've been blessed, it's like heaven. Pass it on. Amen. <laughs> Song selection from as soon.
worse. It is for me. If there's one thing I want you to be able to see about me in my life, I want you to be able to say that man's worship is for me. This is something that we need to be able to say about ourselves. See, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to dress the best. You don't have to have the most money or give the most money. But one thing is for sure that worship needs to be for real. See, we got to be for real with ourselves. See, we don't play it our way for so long. See, we, we tell people, you know, I tried this God thing and, you know, it really didn't work for me. No, no, did you really try? Did you dedicate yourself to studying the Word of God? Did you dedicate yourself to pray? Did you understand the principles of holy living? Understand that you had to be sanctified, set apart from that word of life. When you've done that, there ain't no turning back. See, no turning back. See, that, that, that's not even, it, it's not even an ocean. You say, go back, go back to what? And if you have it, 
say amen. amen. The person beside you say hallelujah. hallelujah. Another person say thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say read the word. But ye are a chosen generation. See, right there, it's already starting out letting you know who you are. If you think you're not important, understand you are. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. See, that's even that's not an oxymoron. But this is a, a royal. Royal, you some folks think of royalty, they think of purple. I think purple is a beautiful color. I think purple is a blessed color. I love the color purple. My wife is in love with the color purple. But that does not make it royal. Most folks associate royal with blue. Ain't got my name in blue. Oh no. But when he said a royal priesthood, that was meaning a distinct type of people. See, this whole verse is going to keep reiterating special people, sanctified people. Why? So we already got you a chosen generation. Hmm? A royal priesthood and holy nation. See, now you know if you are a holy nation, you got to be totally different from a worthy nation. Hello, somebody. A peculiar people. Now I'm going to stop right there. That's the eight clause of that verse. A peculiar people means you know, people sanctified. See, don't think like, because where some folk, they would tell you, I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, tongue, walk with spirit, walk, all this tongue, tip talking, all that kind of stuff. Cuss you out some of this time you ain't it. <laughs> but we need to be, that sanctified doesn't mean all that. Sanctified means set apart. Now I'm going to tell you something right now. If you are set apart from the world, you ain't got to worry about all that other mess, because all that mess will fall off. And the more Christ in, the more world off. See, some things that begin to fall off of you, and you won't even realize it fell off till you look back where you came from. Hello, somebody. Right. We've got to be a peculiar right. people. But see, I want to see us going this year. I believe the Lord is going to take us from regular to ridiculous. We've got to understand it's time for our blessings to take us from an elevation situation. We've got to get to a point where we look to God to bless us, to keep us, to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, to protect us. We've got to call on the truth and live in God. But I want you to go into 2015 and understand you can have elevation in your situation. See, you want you to understand that your condition is not your position. Now, you can be in a bad position and still be in a good condition. That's right. So we want our heart and our spirits to be in a good condition with God. That will place us in a better position with man. But see, sometimes you have to go through some things to get to where the Lord wants you to get. See, sometimes we've got to go through some of the stuff. we got to burn some stuff off because we're the ones that wants to hold on to things. That's right. I want to hold on to that man. Hold on to that woman. Let them go. Let go and let God. What you need to hold on to is the word of God. Get the indwelling of the spirit. See, so many folk talk about the Holy Spirit being upon me. How about having it in you? See, we go back to the Old Testament. The brother brought it out just as beautiful. We go back to the Old Testament teaching. It taught the indwelling presence of God. See, folk want to tell you that's denominational teaching. That's a lie from the pits of hell. That's Bible. It's in there. It's like ragu. It's in there. And we need to eat it like ragu. Take the top off. Mm. Get real. With it. Open it up. Get real. With it. But see, what we've got to understand is that people punish themselves because of pain that they had a very long time ago. See, people punish themselves from things and 
and allow things to prevent them from being the success that they should be. See, people punish themselves and not have the prayer life that they should have. But I'm a firm believer, if it had not been for the troubles in my life, I would not have the prayer life that I now have. Now, I don't believe that I had to go through all that to have the prayer life, but because of my hard head, because of my hard and heart, because of my decision making, but because I didn't have the indwelling presence, that's why I had to go through some situations. Yes, sir. I heard the Lord say, if you leave me, you'll be in a period of heaviness for a time. But see, we have people that punish themselves so much that they don't get the education that they need. We have people punish themselves so much they don't get the victory that they need. That's because they don't allow the indwelling presence to show them what holy living is all about. We got to get there. We really have to get there. But what we need to understand in 2015, God is about to take us some places. God is about to take us some places. God is about to take us where you couldn't go on your own. See, this is what holy living is about. Being able to go where you couldn't go on your own. You might say, brother, I can't pray like that. Brother, I don't study the word like that. Get the indwelling presence of God and you'll be able to do that which you thought you could not do. That which prevents you will no longer hinder you. Anything that was in your way will be removed. Come on, clap your hands for me. Understand is there's no hiding place. You can't even hide from yourself. You might try it. You might fool me. You might fool the spouse. You might fool all the people you work with or where you used to work. But you can't fool God. And the Holy Spirit has made himself available to each and every one of us. It's up to us to ask for the indwelling presence of the true living God. Stand to your feet. Right now, I need to take a moment. I have to be obedient to the school. Because this is the day that the Lord has